Hello, everyone. Welcome to Cudlow. I'm Larry Cudlow. Okay, there's so much breaking news just today. It's going to be hard to keep up with it. So I've enlisted my great pal Pete Hegseth, Fox and Friends weekend co-host. He's going to join me in just a few moments to review some of these breathtaking events that, frankly, only a little while ago seemed impossible. But that's the way it is nowadays. Now, to begin with, the young woman, Gabby Petito, tragically found dead in Wyoming's Grand Teton National Park. It's a terrible story. But the fiancé, still on the lam. Unfindable, perhaps even dead, who knows? Then we've got this incredible, and I mean incredible, 15,000 Haitians under a bridge in Del Rio, Texas. Now, my question is, how and when did they get here? I mean, I looked around, and all of a sudden, there they are, 15,000. By the way, not really from Haiti. Many of them, if not most of them, from Chile, Brazil, other parts of Latin America. I saw in the paper one migrant was interviewed and said, well, Chile was 100 times better than Haiti, but America is 1,000 times better than Haiti. So all of a sudden, they're here. It's like immaculate conception. How does this happen? And the Bidens essentially doing nothing about it. And then we have the Afghan story. The catastrophe lingers. Turns out the drone bombing of ISIS-K in Kabul was a political fraud. Tragically, only people were killed. A family, including seven kids. Unbelievable story. Meanwhile, Mr. Biden's polls are plunging. The country has decided he's certainly not a unifier. His $6 trillion spending plan with inflation is highly unpopular. His $3 trillion tax hikes will hit the middle class and do great damage to the economy. And then, oh, by the way, the Dow Jones fell almost 1,000 points at one time today. It started in Asia with the apparent collapse of a Chinese property company and that spread to the U.S. markets who are confused about the Washington swamp and how the swamp's going to go after our pocketbooks and our portfolios. I also want to mention a good thing, okay, such as possible. Senator Joe Manchin telling a West Virginia business group that the reconciliation spending and taxing should be paused until 2022. That's next year. He believes we don't know enough about inflation being temporary or permanent. We haven't had enough discussion about what could be a 10,000-page bill. It will all boost in government welfare depends on me without any work reliance, remake the energy sector in ways that will jack up costs, increase joblessness. And he also correctly frets about American tax competitive around the world, which would be sacrificed in this bill. So I am very keen on Manchin's statement. Postpone it till next year until we know more, can read more, and evaluate more. Now, folks, you know me. I say save America, kill the bill. Very simple. Newt Gingrich on my radio show Saturday. We talked a lot about big government socialism getting killed by free market capitalism in polling data. Now, this is all so reminiscent of Friedrich Hayek's road to serfdom. Just about 80% of those polled, likely voters, favor free enterprise capitalism over big government socialism. And by the way, new tax tables from the Joint Tax Committee show that people around $100,000 will get hurt by higher taxes. That's an official government scorecard. Mr. Biden's big lie that the rich don't pay their fair share is completely wrong. With the top 1%, paying 40% of total income taxes, the bottom half paying virtually nothing, and the bottom two quintiles have negative income taxes. That's right. We are the most progressive tax system among all the developed economies around the world, that according to the OECD. Now, Mr. Biden attacks business. He attacks successful earners he calls rich people. All he wants is redistribution of income and wealth, not growth, not opportunity, and not prosperity. And he defends this left-wing woke agenda by spreading the big lie about rich people. That's what totalitarian governments do. Biden's arguments are fact-free. Meanwhile, I'll say this. With low taxes, low regulations, and energy independence, with typical average family incomes during the Trump years up by nearly $10,000, that's a factoid Biden never cites. But you know what? The middle class 
Never had it so good under my former boss, Donald Trump. Now, with an extremely divisive Biden, America's foreign policy decline under Biden, absolute chaos on our southern border under Biden, and a tax and spend policy that is scaring 125 million investors near to death, with well, all kinds of things happen that no one thought would happen just a few months ago. I will tell you, folks, I kind of yearn for the calm, peaceful, orderly, prosperous, America first, around the globe days of Donald Trump. Just saying, that's my riff.